my mother inherited her father's strong will, determination, and work ethics. She was the sole breadwinner in, in the family. Whenever the family was in conflict, we would go find my mother. And believe me, that family, that big family, had many conflicts. My mother never had a formal education because she was a girl. But I knew that my mother wanted an education because I watched her struggle every night to learn to read and write. Go o go, go a ga, go e ke, go e ke, the A B C in a Cambodian language. I was the favorite child in the family. I was shy. I didn't have a voice. I didn't have an opinion because I was a girl. When I was 18, my parents sent me abroad for an education. 18 years that I was away, Cambodia, my nation, my country, fell into the hands of the hardcore communist, the Khmer Rouge. From 1975 to 1979, Close to two million lives were lost. My parents, my relatives starved to death or were killed by the hardcore communists. Cambodia fell into more civil war, more armed conflict. It did not stop until the signing of the Paris Peace Accord in 1991. What had happened to that shy little girl? I finished my master's degree at UC Berkeley and then got involved in the resettlement of refugees in the San Francisco Bay Area. Refugees who were coming by boat to escape the Vietnam War, to escape genocide, to escape armed conflicts. I had a voice then. I represented the refugee community in the San Francisco Bay Area. I was involved in community organizing. I became a leader. But I really wanted to go back home to the mango trees, to the meals that my mother prepared for us. I had to move on. I wanted to go home. And finally, 18 years later, I went back to Cambodia with my husband and our two little girls. I got involved in the women's movement and became one of its leaders. We redrafted the new constitution. I got involved in politics and became a member of parliament and was the first woman to lead the women's ministry. Before that, that ministry was ran by a man because they couldn't find a woman strong enough to run the women's ministry. Okay. Then I said, as a minister, not only do I have a voice, but I have the power. And with that power, we moved the women's movement behind the ministry, to change an old proverb that says, men are gold, women are just a white piece of cloth. You know, gold, when it is dropped in mud, it shines, right? But a white piece of cloth, when it is stained, it is stained forever. And we said no. That cannot be true. Society has changed. And we will change this old proverb too. And we did change that old proverb too. Men are gold. Women are precious gems. The gems of Cambodia. Our girls, our mothers, our women, our elderly grandmothers, whoever. Men and women. The nation needs men and women. That change that we made for the people simple. No, it opened doors for us in the women's ministry to push for more changes. 
we redrafted the draft law on the prevention of domestic violence to include two main articles, key. The articles that defines the word, the concept of family. You need, during the war, children who were orphans would go look for their families and whoever would adopt them, they were part of that family. The elderly were looking for their children too and whoever would adopt them, they became, stayed in that family and they stayed under one roof if they could find that roof. So, in the domestic uh, violence law, we redefine the concept of family and that occupation says a family is a group of people, anyone living under the same roof, which allows us to protect domestic workers in that family, which allowed us to protect the orphans, especially the girls, and even the elderly, our grandmothers, because they are also subject to domestic violence. The second article, powerful article, challenging article, marital rape. Marital rape? Yes, marital rape is a crime. Even the women members of parliament said, no, you're going too far. The Ministry of Women's Affairs is going too far. There's no marital rape. We say yes, there is. Because we have documented hundreds and thousands of cases of marital rape. One out of five women in Cambodia are victims of gender-based violence. That includes marital rape, human trafficking. So it became, it's now part of the law on the prevention of domestic violence. I went as far as protecting the rights of sex workers because there are our women because they are human beings. And as women, their rights are human rights. We have to protect them. We have to raise the national budget so that the social sector can provide our girls, our women, equal, fair, quality education and basic health care. We did not stop there. We went and mobilized women to enter politics and thousands of women entered politics at the local level. We did. My journey to justice is a journey that is long. When you want to make change, it comes with a risk. It comes with a price. I have been sued. I have been incarcerated, spent time in jail for defending freedom of expression, I will defend. Today, Cambodia is at a crossroad. Today, I am in exile again. And I know that my mother's strength will walk me through the months, the years ahead like my mother, like women the world over. I am a precious gem. Go oko, go aka, go eke, go eke.